All right, man, I was really looking forward to talking to you. Um, I'm an obsessive about the martial arts. Yes, sir. You're one of the best martial artists in the world. Thank you. And I want to ask you a few specific things about how you develop as a fighter. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to show you something. And uh, just tell me if I sound crazy here, but imagine this is your stereo system, right? Okay. And we're going to build it. And if we can do it very simple, we trace all the lines, we can follow everything. It's very logically laid out. We color code everything. If you want to change something, you can peel up the things, lay down a new thing. It's very organized. So if you build on this stereo system, yep. it is very simple to do. So imagine that's a fighter. So we start building the fighter with balance, with fundamentals, with everything logically laid out. If we want to change the fighter, improve the fighter, evolve the fighter, it's very simple to do, mm -hmm. right? So then we got this. Here's a bad stereo system, <laughs> right? So we've got splitters and duct tape and like old generation technology that we have to build new stuff on. Very yep. hard to do. So this is a fighter who say uh, develops his skill by feel. You know, this kind of works and then so another guy does something then he develops a new way to make that work and kind of just builds on it a little bit at a time until uh, it sort of looks like this. Right. It's harder to change that guy yeah. or improve that guy or evolve that guy. Now, from what I see it, I'm, I'm, I'm also a, a teacher back in Simpsonville, you know, I'm the head kids of truck, we have about 750 students. Yeah. And I've seen kids who have grown up in the martial arts, you know, been doing it for 15, 16 years. And they start out like this. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Learning the fundamentals, the basics, kicks and punches, you know, um, uh, building muscle memory, Movement, things like that, balance. the balance, yeah. exactly, yeah. building athleticism. But after so many years, it becomes this. Right. It becomes a feel thing. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, this, I mean, once they get that feel thing, because what, what happens is, and you've seen a lot of MMA, like if you've seen one fighter, you've seen them all. Right. right. You know what I mean? Very basic, very, you know, one, two kicks, so one, two kicks, take down. Exactly. They teach you to wrestle, to box, to fight this way. If we get a single, you do this. On the fence, you get inside here and do that. That's right. But everybody seems the same. Yeah, but if you if you look at the guys who are doing well in, in, in the game, it's more of a feel for them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, when I'm out there in the octagon, my dad has shown me the basics ever since I was a kid. Yeah. But now that I've been doing it so long, he doesn't really coach me in the cage. Right. He relies, I rely on my feel. Yeah. So I may think I may think I'm going to go out there and do this and do that. But in this situation, in that moment, it may not feel right. And this, we go to this. And we go to default. this. Exactly. Right. So in the beginning, I see more of this when it right. comes to when it comes to teaching and, and more of the fundamentals, like you said, the basic stuff, the the the, uh, the drilling over and over and over again, and the balance and coordination type stuff. And there's a lot of top 20 fighters who are built this way. Yeah, yeah. there is. But if you've seen some of the best, Anderson Silva, yeah. Leoto Machida, Conor McGregor, yeah. Dominic Cruz, Dominic Cruz, yeah. all these guys, man. It's this, right, right? And this is what makes, I think, uh, all the difference. They were allowed to be their own fighter. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like for me, I have my own style. But when I spar with this guy or spar with that guy, I like to pick certain things that they like to do that yeah. may work from that may work for my yeah. style. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And so just they're build allowed that on to yeah. that exactly. complex web of, of your game. Exactly. Right. And so the areas now feel has become a big, big part of it. And Correct me if I'm wrong, it feels like the real root of how guys are winning with feel is through distance management. Dominic Cruz, you, Connor, it's about distance management, exactly. right? Exactly. So how do we take a guy who's been built, like uh, curriculum-based building, these are the building blocks, and have him start to understand the feeling of distance management? And is that why guys like you are winning right now? I, I believe so, but they have to be allowed in their gym. I, I, I've been to some schools, some gyms where they don't allow their their uh, their fighters to even switch sides, you know, and that's and that's gotten back to you know the old school boxing. I think it's just where the, the coaches are being lazy. Yeah, they don't want to teach this guy both sides because then they got to change yeah. some stuff up, you know, with, with holding mitts and things like that. First off, they have to be allowed to, to, to uh, improvise to and improvise innovate. and change exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, because they're so like you said, so structured. I want you doing it like this. I want you like this. I want you like this. Um, and they're not allowed to actually do what they want, you know, become their own fighter, their own style. At our gym, we teach you the fundamentals, yeah. but when it gets to a certain point, you know, we let you be your own fighter. Like, there's a lot of guys that come to my gym who try and fight like me. 
they try and fight with me because they see, they see me doing well, but for their body style, for their body type, maybe it just doesn't work for them. So I tell them, hey, you may pick something that you like for my style and use it, but use it for your game. What makes you feel comfortable out there in, in the cage? It also seems that if someone doesn't understand what it is you're doing that works, they'll do the wrong aspect of it. So someone might see your sidekick and think it's about a sidekick, but it's about intercepting a guy coming in and creating a risk there for him, right? right? And that all goes on actually just experience, sparring experience and um, fighting experience. Yeah, I've been fighting since I was 15 years old. I know Connor's been fighting for a long time. Anderson's been fighting for freaking years, you know what I mean? It's all about experience. And sparring with different people to find out what works and what doesn't work for them. When you fought Johnny Hendricks, the game appeared to be that at the outside range, he had almost no weapons for you. He, what he had to do from outside range was either get kicked by you or pass through kicking and your hands to get his left hand on you or, or catch you. Was that the plan? Don't beat him in close, make him chase and intercept him. Was that the plan? Exactly. That's exactly what happened. Actually, for this fight, I, very, I did very little, rest, uh, very little sparring. Mostly drilling, because I knew exactly what he was going to do. He hasn't changed a whole lot in his last few fights. He's this guy. He's the exact same. Yeah. Exactly. Over, he's the exact same guy. He hasn't changed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there was one point out there where I wanted him to try and hit me with that left hand. Right. Because I've been working, you know, uh, countering that left hand like crazy. Yeah. And I ended up, that's, I think he went to throw the left hand, and I stepped off to the side and I actually caught it with my left hand. I remember, yeah. I catch it, and it yeah. pulls, I did the same thing to Patrick Cote. Yeah, right. I catch it with my left hand, and it pulls me into the right, and at the same time, it makes him drop that hand. You caught him in that range and used it to propel him to set something up, exactly. right? So, a lot of times, if you see me stand there and stick my hands, my hands are down, I stick my face out, it's because I want you to right. hit me. Yeah, it's an invitation. Exactly. So, uh, I try and lure him in, and that's what uh, I think the game is evolving to as well, is, is the one who uh, can convince or try and get their opponent to, to, to feed into their fighting yeah. style, to their game, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. uh, wins. So that's what I did. You know, I kept him at the end of my hands and feet, and I actually frustrated. If I can get you frustrated and get some emotion into, into that fight, Chase I've you. got you. Because yeah. you're going to start doing stuff you normally don't do. You know, you start leaning into your punch, dropping your hands, and that's when I ask. I mean, it's the same thing with, you know, fighting Rory. I'm getting ready to fight the number one contender in June 18th, mm -hmm. and he's definitely the best well-rounded fighter that I've faced so far. Yeah. He loves the left hand. He loves to keep his left foot in front, loves to use his jab. And I know they're gonna come in with a great game plan. Yeah. They're strategists, especially with yeah. Faraz Zahab. Yeah. So, we go back and look at some of the, uh, you know, fights uh, Rory's had, even George St. Pierre yeah. has against good strikers. Yeah. Carlos Khan and Thiago Alves. Covering, or covering the distance to get you up to the cage to tire your arms out, which is a strategy they used in the past. BJ Penn, he first used it against BJ. Exactly, yeah. to try and tire those arms out, you know, to take some of the steam off the hands. So I expect that to happen. Um, he also loves to shoot from the open mat. Yeah. You know, goes for yeah, that. Open range shot, yeah. yeah. So that's something I also have to look at as well. So yeah. using my movement, and using my kicks, my hands, uh, to prevent that. And obviously, of course, I go up to train with uh, Chris Weidman. Yeah, 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 yeah. So having somebody like that in on my legs at all times, somebody who's very technical, that's yeah. strong. I, I mean, just trying to defend. I, I can't defend his yeah. takeaways. But it'll He's work so you. strong. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just trying does wonders for me. And it makes the 170 seem easy. in the chaos of the takedown. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So having somebody like that, and just it gives me a huge confidence that. Um, you know, stepping out there with these high-level guys in the 170 division, just, it's just my confidence just goes through the roof. Uh, it, it's odd when you look at it. We're sitting here talking, and we're eating, we're comfortable coming up with examples of people who are evolving the game, looking yes, at what's going on, and and anticipating the next thing, and then uh, fixing the next problem. Mm -hmm. And yet, so many people are training fighting like it's a finite set of skills that we all know everything now, and you just do this, and you'll be a great fighter. Whereas we know in 2025, the game will look totally different. Completely different. You know? Completely different. I mean, you've seen the game even the past five or six years. The game has changed, man. Which, you know, for some of these guys to retire and to try and come back when the game has changed so much, it's it's, it's crazy, man. Yeah. And, and you're starting to see that. You're starting to see the distance management. You're starting to see people, you know, I mean, the past, I mean, since the UFC's uh, been around, 
You don't see guys getting. You didn't see guys getting knocked out with spin hook kicks. Right. Now you, it's a frequent thing. Now. Uh, yeah, right. People right. are starting to venture out a little yeah. bit more, so the game's evolving. But you still have a handful of guys who are who are afraid to do that. They're, they're sticking with with this. Yeah. But in order to be a great, right. You need to. Yeah, you, right. you have to be the field guy. You have right. to. Be the guy, you know, I like that. I want to do that next time I spar. Right. Yeah. I'm going to try it. And, and that's make what you it make sense do. in your game. Exactly. Uh, I know you got a plane to catch. Yes, sir. Cheers. It's been really great talking to you. Can I get you on awesome. Skype and maybe we do another Would love half to. hour, 45 minutes of analysis? Would love to. Are you going to beat Rory? Yes, sir. All right, man. Thank Enjoy you very much. Fight. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.